reception, but I will give you the mission to proceed uh, to proceed this. Uh, if it is necessary, I have the region of the as it pleases the court, your lordship, I start here for the state with Mr. Marondez and Mr. Pinge. Thank you. Good morning to all. Uh, good morning, your lordship. I'm glad we are able to proceed today. And uh, Mr. Biekas, we, we wish you a good recovery. I, I see that you are still recovering. Yes, no, thank you. Um, Mr. Isam, good morning. Morning, morning, your yes. Lordship. Mm -hmm. I recall the last time we adjourned proceedings. A uh, counsel for the state, Mr. Ultivez, was asking you questions. Uh, I'll allow him to proceed in case he still has questions. And Feel free if you become tired. If there's a chair, then you can take a seat. <coughs> yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Isao. Good morning, Mr. Mm. Um, for today's proceedings, let us deal with the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with Angola. You recall you testified in detail about that? Oh, okay. Now, this MOU. It's the one which is depicted at divider 13 of file one. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Exhibit N. Uh, it's bundle one, you know, cheap. Divider 13. find out from you. In accordance with the provisions of the Memorandum of Understanding that you signed, how were the Namibians supposed to benefit from that MOU? My Lord, the MOU, which was a product and shepherded by the then Permanent Secretary, Madam Ulitara Rivera, that very MOU was premised on a SADAC protocol of 2001. It was premised on a SADAC protocol of 2001, which was in fact signed by the founding president of our republic of Namibia. And out of that memorandum, a protocol, uh, that which was uh, multilateral, uh, SADAC protocol multilateral, uh, uh, a protocol bilateral came out, which was signed in 2007. And that very protocol, my lord, of 2007, had a timeline of five years, up to 20, 2012 from 2007, if, I'm, if my memory serves me well, October, to 2012. Now, the benefits, first of all, before we go to the protocol of 2014, the memorandum, is it called, the effect-finding mission was, in fact, uh, uh, visited Angola. And in that fact-finding mission, my lord, we're looking at first 
and uh, which was in fact, if I have to put it straight, the violation of our territorial integrity by Angolan or by vessels that was registered in Angola. Now, my Lord, that fact-finding mission was not, in fact, a fora where we were negotiating or went to, we, were just, we just wanted to ascertain, to establish whether this very protocol that was signed in 2007 is still valid because nobody from the parties has given any indication to pull out. Neither Namibia, Republic of Namibia, neither the People's Republic of Angola. They have not given any indication. So now I'm getting to the protocol benefit-wise mm -hmm. in terms of the MOU. The protocol had four areas how Namibians could be benefiting. The first area was the monitoring, control, and surveillance, called MSC. Second area was aquaculture, where we could have at least cooperate, because it's a cooperation uh, with Angola on aquaculture for food security. The, th the, 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 other, the other area was uh, the area of research and development. It is uh, the issue of how we could have gone about from Namibian side and from Angolan side, at least to share in research and development in terms of straddling stocks, fish that move from one side of the border into the other side, my lord, of Namibian waters as well, how we could benefit in terms of research. The last area, for the fourth area, was trade facilitation. In terms of trade facilitations, we were in fact trying to bring Namibian and, uh, Namibian and Angolan business people together in order to exploit a resource. And that was also, in fact, the benefits that we, our people, could at least have a B2B, business to business uh, arrangement between Angola and Namibians within the framework of our law, the Marine Resources Act of 2000. Okay. <clears throat> so that was the benefits that in terms of employment, in terms of that Namibians could benefit or even Angolans could benefit as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So the holding of quotas to Namgoma Pesca SA mm -hmm. in particular, the benefits you expected were in terms of employment creation for Namibians. My lord, the benefits were multi, uh, multi, multi, what do you call it? multi, it was more than one, not only employment. It was benefits in terms of, uh, of jobs, as we are saying. There were benefits in terms of levies and quota fees to be paid to Namibia. It was benefits in terms of food security, whereby at least the fish that is caught in Namibia could be marketed in Angola. It was also benefits in terms of strengthening our relations, our cooperation relations with Angola, since we, have, we are sharing the same common borders with Angola, marine-wise, is also river-wise, the uh, Kabango River in aquaculture, etc., uh, Kunene River. Those are the, in fact, those benefits that could be de derived. It. And there can be more other benefits that could be derived. It. Okay. Yes. And are you aware of which Namibians um, benefited from this MOU? As you are minister. I'm just, yes. mm -hmm. In terms of employment, my lord, there, my lord, there is a, a provision for the 
there's a certain percentage of members of the crew that are supposed to be Namibians. Whether it is now, if, if that very quota is, 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 is landed by a, a, a Namibian flagged vessel, then at least those crews must be X percentage Namibians. I cannot now really recall how, what is the percentage, but I know that Namibians should benefit. Number two, Namibians were benefiting in terms of, 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 of the levies and the quarter fees, because those quarter fees and those levies are in fact paid to the Namibian government through Fiscus as well. And that very quarter fees, the income is being used for the construction of roads, schools, clinics, et cetera, et cetera, especially developmental projects, capital projects in, 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 in government. It's also operational as well. But that is determined by the budget, by Fiscus, by the Ministry of Finance. OK. And in this particular case, which entity was doing the fishing? Which entity was fishing on behalf of Namgoma? Or oh, the, the, the vessel company? Yes. Uh, to, in terms of the disclosure you brought about, mm -hmm. uh, because I was not, f first of all, my lord, I was not responsible for the issuance of licenses of vessels as a minister. Uh, the law is very clear on that one. I have re made reference to the sections of the law in terms of who was responsible for issuance of licenses in that regard. The, 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 the vessel company, the operating, the, the, that who caught the, 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 the quota, lending the quota, according to the disclosure, my lord, was an Icelandic company called Summary or something. I don't know, they had different vessels, but I cannot, but according to the disclosure, Okay, so during 2014 to 2019, you were not aware of which vessel was used to catch this quarter? 2014 to 2019, my lord, I never got any applications as a minister for, for, for what? Vessel applications. Uh, uh, the, the applications of vessels, as I've referred to, Regulation 241 is launched with the Permanent Secretary. Regulation 241 of 2001 uh, uh, is launched with the Permanent Secretary. And the Permanent Secretary evaluates because they have to look at issues like whether that very vessel was involved in illegal or unregulated, unreported uh, activities. So they normally launch that, and then they issue the license. I don't even see that very license of that, of all those things. Okay. And I think in the, again, in the disclosure, which came out after my failed, failed application, my law, it came very clear that these very licenses were issued by the officials of the Ministry of Fisheries. Okay, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, during 2014, were you aware if Mr. Ricardo Gustavo was involved in any fishing? My Lord, as I have testified, I think, in my evidence chief, the term that they use normally, which is used in the court, I said that he was briefly, briefly introduced while I was on my way out from the office by the then permanent secretary, and I never had a time, a time to sit down with him at least to discuss or to have any detailed discussions with you. But it was in person, it was briefly brought to me. OK. Before the nomination of Namgoma Pesca, were you aware if he was involved in fishing? Before the nomination of, 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 of uh, Namgoma Pesca, Namgoma SA. Pesca. yes. Okay. My Lord, I can testify here that I never knew him before. OK. I never knew him before. There were letters with the names of Ricardo or something like that. It's just the same like new 
applicants for fishing rights. You don't know them. You just hear yeah, this is the person, this is the profile of this company, but you will never meet those people as a minister, nothing at all. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And at that stage, prior to the nomination, were you aware if Mr. Gustavo had any fish processing plants in Namibia or Angola? Not at all, no. I think so. No. I never knew that he had some projects pertaining to fishing plants, vessels, or any right in Angola in okay. terms of fishing. All yes. right. Yeah, I don't know. Really. So you're not even aware if he was involved in marketing of fish either in Namibia or Angola, is that correct? My Lord, I don't do any due diligence on people who have interest in fishing. Yeah. Unless they, uh, maybe the security vetting came about that he was involved in criminal activities. All right. Or something like that. Okay. And you relied on the Memorandum of Understanding in order to nominate Namgoma Pesca SA and for the subsequent quarters being awarded Namgoma Pesca SA. Is that correct? No, my Lord, you, you, as a minister in office, my Lord, you get briefed by your management, you get briefed by your peers. So in terms of briefings that you are getting and in terms of recommendations, you don't, as I've stated already, you don't want to be a bottleneck in the administration of any, any entity or let's say the institute, institute where I was in. I don't want to be a bottleneck. So I take the brief, I accept what they are saying because the trust is with them. I have trust in them and I sign off those very, 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 very briefs or those very uh, documents that is coming to me. Okay. Mm. Uh, let's stick with the MOU at the mm. moment. Correct. The awarding of quarters to Namgoma Pesca SA was in terms of the MOU. Mm. Is that correct? No, the MOU does not specify mm -hmm. the quantum, the amount that is to be allocated. That is determined by, an by the application for a quarter, my lord, to the permanent secretary's office and the management. They determined because you cannot award or allocate any quota unless it's recommended. Okay. Mm. And that is in fact in terms of what I have testified in my in the in under the MO what is the internal memorandum as well. Yes. Mm. And this MOU, according to your evidence, is in fact a fisheries agreement under Section 35.1 of the Marine Resources Act. As concluded, as signed off. Okay. So when you signed it in Angola, you, mm -hmm. according to your evidence, were signing a fisheries agreement. Correct, my lord. Okay. You were empowered by the president to go and sign that memorandum of understanding. Is that correct? Correct, my lord, because I could not even travel out of the country or for a working visit, because mm. that was a working visit. Okay. It was not the fact-finding mission. And upon your return, mm. you had to report back what you had done in Angola, is that correct? Normally, my lord, mm -hmm. what happens is that when, I, when a document, an instrument is signed, that instrument is hand-carried by the officials to back to Namibia, and they report via Mirko, my lord, via the Ministry of In International Relations and Cooperation, uh, Foreign Affairs, normally. And then Foreign Affairs is reporting to Kabuki. And that I have testified as well in my evidence in chief by providing from the disclosure a document that was in fact a memorandum, cabinet memo, that was from the ministry, ministry of Mirko, Mirko, uh, uh, Ministry of in, uh, International Cooperation, uh, Relations and Cooperation. Okay. Sunday morning, there was nothing else that you did. 
after signing the MOU, mm. the MOU was internalized mm -hmm. because this very documents are kept in the register or in the in 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 in, 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 the, in, in the registry of the permanent secretary. So of course MOUs are classified. They are classified and they are kept there, not with the minister, unless I ask for a copy, just to study and see what it is all about. This MOU had to be gazetted, is that correct? Correct, my lord. And it had to be sent to the Attorney General's office. My lord, the procedures of gazette mm. is flowing out from the office of the accounting officer, the permanent secretary or the ED, because they prepare the gazettes and that gazette, that preparations are sent with a cover letter, I assume. Yes. And that cover letter is prepared by the office of the permanent secretary for the minister to sign off. Mm. And the minister normally signs off and then it's sent to where it's supposed to go, whether to the Ministry of Justice or to the AG's office. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, that I... So in terms of that letter, which you would, as a minister, you'd be the one to sign it off, is that correct? That is what I was inducted and that's what I was briefed, that yes. I must sign it off, yes. You then request for the memorandum of understanding to be gazetted as a fisheries agreement, is that correct? This is, in fact, what was in the, in, the, in the content of the letter. I assume, because I don't have the letter here with me. All right, you can go to your, to your file, divider 22. Still the same bundle. Mm -hmm. Do you see the letter which is reflected there? Letter of the 20th of October, mm. 2014. Yes, and do sign that letter. Myself, my lord, it's like my signature, it's copy. Um, file one divided 22. So that, in terms of that letter, which was written to Honorable Kawana, correct, yeah. you made reference to the Memorandum of Understanding, is that correct? Signed with Angola. Yeah, I'm just trying to locate the, the, the paragraph where I made reference. Okay. Um, If the state court can, can help me this one. Um, the first paragraph mm -hmm. at the bottom there, mm -hmm. you said the president had authorized the minister to sign the agreements between the Republic of Namibia, the Republic of Mozambique, and the Republic of Angola, respectively. Yeah, the first paragraph, yes, I see that. Okay, so it's this is the MOU that you are referring to, is that correct? Correct, that's the MOU, I believe. Okay. And in the following paragraph, you indicate that the president must publish by proclamation any such fisheries agreement so concluded. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what the letter says. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, in instance, what I want to get from you mm. is that the message that you conveyed to your colleagues mm. upon your return mm. is that we have a fisheries agreement. Mm. Let this fisheries agreement be gazetted. Is that correct? Well, this is what I requested in the letter. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So if anyone inquired from you as to what you had signed in Angola, mm -hmm. you would inform them it's a fisheries agreement. Is that correct? Correct, my lord. Oh, okay. Not a memorandum of understanding. My lord, mm -hmm. it is not, it, well, it is described as a MOU, memorandum mm -hmm. of understanding. Mm -hmm. But in the real sense, it was an agreement that was ended because I also, in my testimony on the okay. and not 
the parties have understand. No. No. Okay. And I want. I don't know whether we should go back to that. No, I, I recall that part yes, so um, yeah. where the wording was changed. Where in the MOU, Correct. which was brought to you by Nubukawana, there was a way which said they've reached an understanding. Correct. Whereas in this one, the no, only difference I, I was that it's yes. agreed. Correct, my lord. Yes, no, we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. Now, this memorandum of understanding, mm -hmm. according to your evidence, it's the only so called fisheries agreement that you concluded with Angola. Is that correct? The, the which I signed. Yes. Yes, which I signed. So yes. the, you do you do not have any other agreements with Angola which you signed mm -hmm. that you are aware of? I cannot recall any other agreement that I have signed with Angola. Oh. Neither a le uh, neither a letter or anything in that regard, or, yeah. which is in fact in terms of the Vienna Conventions. No. Oh, okay. And as you already testified, it is in terms of this MOU which has gazetted that quotas were awarded to Namgoma Pesca SA. Is that right? Can you come again with the... With the it, it is in terms of this MOU which mm -hmm. has gazetted mm -hmm. that quotas were awarded to Namgoma Pesca SA. In terms of this letter? MOU, not the letter. Oh, the MOU. Yes. yes. So there were quotas are, uh, awarded in June... August, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just get back to the 22. Yes. Specified. Yeah, quotas were awarded already in, 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 in July 2014. After the after the before the gazette. Okay. Before the gazette. Yes. Okay. It's awarded, in fact, as recommended. Yes, and the awarding of those quotas was in terms of the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding. Yeah, the quotas were, in fact, awarded in terms of that very agreement. Okay. Yeah, which was not specific in terms of the quantum. Yeah, no. Because it was not... And I'm saying that because the, the TACs, the fish that is available in in the waters, in our waters, varies. It's not fixed. The, the, it, it varies because of circumstances and the recommendations that we are getting from the marine scientists. All right. Now, this memorandum of understanding that was signed, mm -hmm. does it stipulate the species of fish or aquaculture that we are ordered? It doesn't, it doesn't, my lord. It doesn't specify, in fact. This MOU does not specify because you can give today horse mackerel, you can give tomorrow hake, the other day you can give monk. It, it, it is just the monetary value of that value, not the specific, the, the fishing. All right. Mm -hmm. Does it set any limits on the quantity of the quotas to be awarded to the so called joint ventures? It does not, my lord. It does not. Uh, the quantity of the quotas Allocation. to be awarded. It does not specify that. Does it specify which joint venture would be the recipient of the quotas? It does not specify that, my lord. It was open for you and for anyone to, to tap from that um, agreement. That's why in my annual addresses to industries, I was inviting, in fact, the public, in terms of the of, of, of those which I have also availed, uh, that this agreement is in place. Please come and do things. ABC. Okay. Approach the ministry. Now, in this memorandum, which you've termed an agreement, is there any indication as to what the parties to this memorandum, by financial obligations, were? Is that stipulated in it? When, my lord, when the agreements bilateral is concluded, there is a provision in the Marine Resources Act, if I'm not mistaken, 36, something like that, after the Gazette 36, 37 section. Mm -mm. One, we need to go to that. The agreement is here. I mean, the, not, the, not the agreement, but the... the, the
supposed to help the state council. And the fisheries agreements. Giving effect, that's now on uh, under the heading Fisheries Agreement of the M Marine Resources Act, 30 uh, publication of Fisheries Agreement uh, uh, giving effect to fisheries and international agreements. It says the Minister may. Uh, which section are you referring 37, to? 37. Okay. Yeah. The minister may, for the purposes of any fisheries agreement, enter into under section 35 or any international agreement to which Namibia is a party, make such regulations as the minister may consider necessary on expedience for the carrying out and for giving effect to the provisions of any such agreement or any amendment of such agreement. I just want to read that very well. Mm -hmm. You say that normally it is for the minister discretionary may to give effect to such fisheries agreement and uh, also for sure make such regulations as may it fit necessary. So it's very optional in fact, that's what we're saying. And this is how I was briefed, and this is how I was always inducted all along. So you were briefed that the issue of financial obligations, it's an optional issue. My lord, financial obligations is not optional in terms of payments of levies in payments of quota fees. That cannot be waived away because that's an income for our government. That's an income to our people. So what was the agreement now in terms of this MOU on the financial obligations? The agreement. You refer to payment of levies, payment of quotas. What was the agreement? Is that stipulated anyway? In the fisheries agreement, you don't mm. stipulate Okay. It's not stipulated here. In terms of my understanding, mm. I was not briefed that they should not pay levies. As long as you come into my house, as long as you come into my territory, even if you go to other countries, when you get a visa, you pay, unless you are maybe given exemption to the visa. But this one, they had to pay. Even if it was given to an Angolan company called Namgoma Peshka, the right, they catch in Namibian waters, they have to pay their, their levies and, and they must employ Namibians as well. And the quota fees, who has to pay for those? That very, uh, uh, Namgoma and, 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 and their partners who are now, who were the, what's it, the vessel companies or whatever. Oh, okay. Mm. Now, Mr. Isam. Yes, sir. From your explanation. Mm. This MOU was supposed to be reciprocal, is that correct? My Lord, when we signed, I signed with the Minister of Fisheries mm -hmm. of Angola. Mm -hmm. So that is already reciprocity. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge that we need to commit ourselves to the rights and the duties as enshrined in that very MOU, or that okay. agreement. Okay. And in terms of reciprocity, in my internal memo, that internal memo which I referred to my lot, which was the allocating quota allocations on the internal memo, that I made, I said, when I was brought that thing, I said, we must consider also reciprocity, because why is it only us, Namibians, to open up our, our, our territories? but the others are not also allowing us because we are also sometimes in, st in, in, in stress of some of our... And that was 
consider before the MOU are signed the issue of reciprocity. It was considered on my comments, my lord. It was my comment, my lord. My comment when I was when I was getting this internal memor memorandum. It was not during the time of the signing because this comment went to the PS and the PS prepared letters as well to communicate it over to the to my counterpart for my signature. That we have allocated so much quota, but why are we not getting this uh, 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 reciprocity? Okay, just hold on. Mm -hmm. As the Minister of Fisheries, mm -hmm. quotas were awarded to an Angolan company, is that correct? Namgoma Pesca SA. Come again, my lord. The quotas mm -hmm. were supposed to be allocated to an Angolan company, Namgoma Pesca SA. Mm -hmm. And the Angolans, what were they supposed to do? I mean, my lord, that, that question is a little bit not so clear, but I will try to answer it. Uh, uh, my lord, Angola has got its own rules and regulations when it comes to company law and things like that. Mm -hmm. Namibia has its own rules and regulations. So what happened, my lord, a right was given to an Angolan company that owns 100% a Namibian company called Namgoma Namibia. There's Namgoma Angola. There was Namgoma, Angola, there was Namgoma, Namibia. And this Namibian company was owned 100%. And we have control of this very company in Namibia. When you say we have control, who's, who's we? I'm saying that control in terms of the laws, if uh. you don't comply to the law, then we can bring you to Namibian courts here. Oh, okay. And then sue you or say you have violated you have violated this provision of the of the law. You must pay so much, or you must go to prison so much mm. for so long. Okay. So that is what we are. That I'm trying to say. So in terms of the of, of 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 the allocation of quotas, it was done for the Namibian for Namibian company, which was 100% owned by Angolans. So this very company is supposed to account. They were supposed to account to the ministry in terms of the lendings and in terms of the employment and everything like that, what was employed on, on, on the vessel companies with whom they had some arrangements, that Namibian company. So my lord, in terms of what I'm testifying here, is that the company which was registered in Namibia was to be accountable to the Namibian authorities. All right. I don't know whether I've answered the, the, the question, my lord, or did I maybe? Let me simplify it. Yes, my lord. Mm -hmm. The Angolan Ministry of Fisheries, mm -hmm. was it supposed to award any quotas to the Namibian entity? Because you, as our minister was awarding quotas, the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Angolan company, Namgoma Pesca SA, were they supposed to award quotas to any Namibian company? My Lord, it was not, it was not a must for me. It was not a must. But mm -hmm. I tried to say, please also reciprocate. Because there was a time in the history of Namibia, my Lord, and even now today, if I've talked about the pelchets, the pelchet as fisheries. It's today closed, that's why you have Etosha and some canneries not working in Namibia. They have extended a hand of solidarity to Namibia to catch fish in the Angolan waters. So I was, in terms of that background, was trying to say, look out, why can't they also extend reciprocity? Uh, Mr. Issa, I'm not concerned about you, what you are concerned with. Mm -hmm. I want to know what was agreed upon. Mm -hmm. 
straightforward. Okay. Yeah, there was no reciprocity. It was a fisheries agreement for Namibia to grant rights to a, to a Angolan company in terms of the fisheries agreement uh, uh, that is uh, 35. Oh, okay. Section 35. Okay. So there was no benefit for the Namibians to receive quotas from Angola? Namibians were benefited from employment. Namibians were benefiting from levies and quota fees. Yes, my question is specific. Insofar as quotas being awarded by Angola to Namibia, that was not there. Quotas are located to? To a Namibian entity. A Namibian entity. It's simple. You, the yeah, Ministry of I'm Fisheries was awarding to... quotas allegedly to an Angolan entity, Namgoma Pesca SA. But the Angolan government, Ministry of Fisheries, were not awarding any quotas to any Namibian entity. Simplify it further, <laughs> Simplify it further because uh, I don't want to repeat uh, what I have testified on already, my lord. Uh, okay. You, and neither do I want to be taken into a, into a situation where my my, 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 my intellect has been tested on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll just make it very simple. There's no Namibian company or close cooperation that received quotas from the Angolan Ministry of Fisheries. I don't know about that. You don't know about mm -mm, that? I don't know about that. No. Okay. Let me put it simple as well. Oh, okay. Now, Mr. Esau, do you have any legal qualifications? In the sense of? Do you know the law? Are you a lawyer? I was a member of parliament, my lord, for quite many years. Okay. Uh, I, was, uh, I was, in fact, inducted in law by the late judge, uh, Chief Justice uh, Chuckleson, Arthur Chuckleson from South Africa. I've been exposed to various uh, uh, forums uh, of, of, of workshops and, and seminars, and you name all of that, uh, in, my, in my lifetime, uh, from the time of trade unions, when we were also trying to put up the Labor Act. Uh, I've been very, very exposed to quite a number of, 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 of areas, my lord. And that is, in fact, that helped me as well. All right. Are you an expert in drafting of agreements? No, I'm not. I'm yes. not. You are not. I'm, I'm not an expert because agreements are shepherded by technocrats in the ministry. All and right. I was relying on technocrats, that is the peers and the management, because I don't have any, 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 any capacity, personal capacity. I can read maybe. But maybe I don't know what is the behind that, what, what is hidden behind that. But I'm telling you, I'm, my lord, I'm saying that uh, this very, I, I don't have any experts on that. No, oh, okay. I was negotiating for wages and salaries. Yes, uh, that I did as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a former trade unionist. So I take it then that you would not know what provisions should be incorporated in agreement for it. For, okay, you would not know what provision should be incorporated in agreement. My Lord, government is quite complex. Mm -hmm. Government operates very differently to, to, to ordinary, ordinary matters. Uh, government is, is, as I said, is complex and I, don't, I will never know what must be incorporated, what must not be incorporated. That's why the PS, whenever the accounting officer who shepherded such agreements linked up with the attorney general's office or with the whatever uh, uh, justice, ministry of justice. Okay. And they normally see what needs to be incorporated or not incorporated into agreements. All right. So in actual fact, a legal opinion could be sought from the AG's office as to what should be incorporated in it in order for it to be an agreement. Is that correct? A legal opinion will be sought from the Attorney General's office as to what should be incorporated in the document. It's not vague. 
it's not uh, 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 unclear, in fact, when I'm saying here, uh, it is legal, it's lawful, uh, uh, and uh, if that opinion was sought, and the PS then was still sitting with that very document or that opinion, and still bounce it off with other members of the of, of, of government, like the Mirko, because I have testified that this very agreement, the draft which was, in fact, uh, the, the draft which was negotiated by the PS, uh, uh, that that very draft uh, was uh, was shared for scrutiny by the office of the of the of the of the AG attorney general uh, uh, the attorney general came back with an opinion through an affidavit no, I through, through a letter sorry uh, through a letter my lord that very very opinion some matters were, were were incorporated some were not incorporated into the agreement to my understanding and that very a, that scrutinized copy was sent to Angola. That is my understanding, and with, because they have to share with Angola as well. It's two parties involved. So, and when Angola reverted back to Namibia, I assume that's where this issue of understanding and uh, was changed to the parties agreement. So, and that was reported also to Mirko by officials who were part of the negotiations, the technocrats, part of the negotiations. They reported that in, I think, in February 2014. And uh, I have also given evidence to that fact, uh, uh, although it's a copy, my lord. There's a copy of, of extract of, 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 of the discussions of that meeting. And then that very 2014 March, March 2014, I've also given a copy of that. A memorandum was presented by the minister of Mirko to cabinet. And that's where the chief said the agreement must be concluded, it must be signed. Okay. So she also referred to agreement, irrespective of what was what was said, in the in the minute of, of that very, I, I highlighted that one to, to our honorable court, my lord. Okay. So you said there was a draft agreement forwarded to the AG's office, accompanied by a covering letter, is that correct? There was a draft agreement, mm -hmm. yes, my lord. And you signed that letter, which accompanied the draft agreement. Which you referred me now here to. Wait, wait. I don't know where is that letter. Okay, but you Can know. Can we get? All right, all right. Yeah, I don't know the letter. I don't have the letter here, but I have only the letter of response, reply. Okay, but you can recall that you had signed a letter. Accompanying the can we can I get the letter, my lord? Because it's very right twenty two. Twenty two. Is it the one? No, it's not the one. There's one in the right different one. Nine. A response. Divider nine. A response from uh, from the office of the attorney general. Okay, no, it's fine. I'll provide you with a letter at a later stage. You don't have to look for it. Then I'll respond from that, my lord. No, okay. But there was a response from Honorable Kawana. Correct, yeah. mm -hmm. With regard to a letter mm -hmm. under divider nine, is that correct? Correct, my lord. Mm -hmm. All right. Which has addressed to you? Correct, my lord. For the attention? Yes, for the attention of Mr. H Ms. Hidela. Correct. But it was addressed to you? Yeah. Okay. But it normally goes to... Yes, to the mm -hmm. PS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Now, this was a response to a letter written by... Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I see. I'm, I'm, checking. I'm checking it. Yes, my yes, yes, you agree. Okay. There's a letter response. All right. Now, as a person who does not have legal qualifications, do you value the opinion of the Attorney General when he gives you a legal opinion? My Lord, I do value that. All right. I do value any opinion. Oh, okay. Whether it's legal or not, I do value any. I, I, I do respect anybody's opinion. Oh, okay. I just want you to have a look at the bundle here. Mm. Lordship, the, the first bundle, these documents are numbered at the top in the middle page, the middle of the page, Your Lordship. I just want to take it to page 819 of the first bundle. The first bundle, page 819. There's only one page, 819 of both bundles. you find the document titled Draft Agreement on Cooperation in Fisheries and Aquaculture between the Government of the Republic of Namibia and the Government of the Republic of Angola. You see that? Yes, I did even submit this evidence in my... But I can yes, my Lord. Yes, no, you testified on it. Testified on it. So in instance, this is the document that mm -hmm. was sent to Honorable Kawana's office to be scrutinized, yes? Correct, my lord. This is good. Okay. Yeah, we said first draft. Oh, okay. And from your knowledge, this document was in fact scrutinized by Honorable Kawana. Is that correct? So correct, my lord. Okay. And if we go to divider nine of your bundle. Yes, my lord. Which is marked um, exhibit, I think this should be J1. Are you there? J1, no? Yes, I'm there. You're right. There is another document which is titled, at well, the top is written, scrutinized copy AG. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So this was the copy that was referred back to your office. Correct, my lord. After the agreement was scrutinized. Correct, my lord. Okay. And what is the title of that document? Memorandum of Understanding. Oh, okay. Between. <coughs> Government of the Republic of Angola mm. through the Ministry of Fisheries mm. and the Government of the Republic of Namibia through the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. Oh, okay. So you had sent an agreement to the AG's office to have it scrutinized. Correct, my lord. And when it was scrutinized, what was referred back to you is a memorandum of understanding Correct. an agreement. Correct, my lord. Okay. And this scrutinized copy, which was sent back to you, it was accompanied by a letter from the Attorney General. Is that correct? You are telling J1. Yes, Your Lordship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct, my Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm.
in the first paragraph, the title of that letter is Draft Agreement on Cooperation in Fisheries, Aquaculture between Namibia and Angola, yes? Okay. And in the first paragraph, he says, we refer to your letter dated 25 October 2013 and mm -hmm. our subsequent consultation with your minister with regard to the above mission matter. Mm -hmm. And he says in paragraph one, we amended the draft agreement in order to accommodate our input therein, which amended document is attached here too. Mm -hmm. The electronic version of the document can be emailed to the ministry on request. Paragraph two, this was now the advice he was giving to you, is that correct, to the ministry? Of fisheries to the minister. Okay. Not to the minister. It's addressed to the minister. You are the minister. You are the one who's going to sign that so-called agreement in Angola. You want to tell me that you do not have knowledge of this from the AG? My lord, I am not denying that I don't have knowledge of mm. this. What I am saying is that I am not the shepherd. I was not the shepherd of negotiating this very agreement. There were people who were well vested with the administration of government to negotiate agreements. So this was sent just because I was the minister. If it was another person, if Bessie was the minister, he would be sent the same. Yeah. OK. An opinion is sought from the AG's office regarding an agreement you want to go and sign. Correct. Did you have knowledge of this opinion? My Lord, this was sent to me. Mm. This letter was sent to me. Yes. I refer this letter to the PS because it's for the attention of the PS. Oh, okay. So you received the letter? I received the letter. I'm not saying that I've not seen this letter. I oh. saw the letter. All right. And I referred it for them to still to, to, to talk about it. And since you are seeking a legal opinion from the AG, you've now received a response. I mean, obviously, you should have read the letter. It depends what time, you know, <laughs> my lord. You know, 20, I don't want to bring in other issues, uh -huh. but 20 December 2013, mm. I had other issues on my mind. And that was, I was with my, with my brother who was really, dying from pancreatic cancer. I was more there. Mm. I was not, in fact, mostly in the office. I was with that at, at, at Paramount Hospital, with him, at least to see what we can do as a family. And I'm the firstborn of our family. Oh. And that's on the basis. Yeah, I'm the firstborn. I'm the breadwinner of our family, of the ESO family here in Namibia. Yes. Yeah, so I had to, 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 to attend to that. I, my parents were born. It was me. Everyone's looking at me. Let's get back to the letter. Yes. You so I'm telling you in December, I was mostly there because he passed on January 2014. You have the letter in your possession? Yes, I have it here, here, in the file. And when you saw it, you saw that it related to the draft agreement that you had sent to the AG? Yeah, it relates to the response. Okay, and you read this letter? Well, I read and I, and I referred it back to, oh, okay. to, to, the, to, the, to, to them. All right, so you read it. You, you said you read it and referred it. I read and I referred okay. and I was off. I was gone. So when you read this letter, mm -hmm. what did it say in paragraph two? What did you read in paragraph two of that letter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As conveyed to us by the ministry. Yes. It appears that mm -hmm. Angola prefers the MOU, mm -hmm. which is legally non-binding. Okay. Over a legally binding agreement. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yes, please. I want to, I want to see what you read. It would be untenable to have one party considering the instrument to be legally binding, while the other party does not. It is imperative that the two governments adopt common position on the nature of the proposed instrument. In view of the fact that the proposed instrument appears to some extent in bracket, in its wording, to be a declaration of intentions regarding cooperation in fisheries and aquaculture without specifying concrete legal obligations, we recommend that be signed as a MOU. Okay. Provision is made for the parties to enter under the MOU.
a lot in terms of the affidavit of uh, Honorable Dr. Kawana. He made reference to this very agreement. Yes. And I've said that this very agreement was cabled, was sent to the office of the PS because they have the capacity. They were the shepherds, they were the negotiators of this agreement. And they, in fact, were supposed to input all these matters in the agreement. They did I assume, I'm not saying that, uh, I know assumption is not the issue, but I assume that they have shared this very scrutinized document with their counterparts in Angola. Because this was sent in December, December 11, 2013. 2013, December to June, July 2014 was six months. And in between that, those periods of time, there must, be an, there must have been in the action that is not in fact brought out in this very thing. There was definitive, definitely uh, in the action between the chief negotiator, which was the P, who was the PS, and the chief negotiator of Angola, where they must have come to terms. Because I don't think, I don't think that everything that was proposed or advised by the AG was included into the final, final agreement that was signed. Okay, so you are saying that responsibility, mm -hmm. the PS yes. was supposed to incorporate the AG's recommendations. Input. Yes, the, the AG's input mm -hmm. into the final document to be signed. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you read the final document that was signed? The one that was gazetted. That's the one because I want to get to that one. Prior to signing, let's before you get to that. Before. Prior to signing. Oh, prior to signing. I was briefed, it? my lord. I was briefed that the agreement is ready for signature, for conclusion, and I need to give them a date or time when of my availability. I have not, in fact, at that point in time of the briefing, seen the agreement myself. I was just briefed by the peers that the agreement is ready for signature. And based on that one, and the trust I had in my officers, officials, I, in fact, gave them that since 2014 was a very busy year for me, I gave them June. I've, because it was a year of elections, it was a year of, of activities, uh, political as well as office-wise. So there was a lot of activities on my schedule. And uh, for me, I had, uh, I, I, the briefing, I took it. Because as a minister, my principal advisor is the PS. And I cannot, I cannot come and say, no, Comrade PS, uh, what you are telling me is not worth the paper or worth whatever. I've been very accommodative with everybody. Um, I'll ask you my question again, mm. since you've not answered it. The final MOU mm. that you we signed, which was gazetted, mm. did you read it prior to signing it? It was presented to me the time when I left for Angola for signature when after, after given them the specific time that I would be available. That was in June, yeah. For me to read and to comprehend So you 
read according to your version a document that you signed in Angola? Because I trust in my in my in my official. So you do not know, according to your version allegedly, that the recommendations by the PS were included in that MOU. My lord, whatever was by the AG. recommended by the AG was the responsibility of the technocrats to, in fact, factor those recommendations into the MOU. Mm. I am not there to take pen and put pen to paper. I was not, in fact, that was not my responsibility. I was, in fact, already, before I was even appointed as a minister, full cabinet minister, I was advised and told you are not there to prepare letters. You are not there to prepare documents like agreements. You just have to sign. I was rubber stamping in fact, ah, that way. Rubber stamping, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Frank. Let's be fair on that matter. Uh, yeah, no. I had, I, had, I had an issue, but I, 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 I wrote a letter at one stage, my lord. That letter was torn to pieces and then said, no, we prepare letters. Okay, just hold on. You are a minister in the Ministry Correct. of Fisheries. Correct. Who's running your ministry? <laughs> it is the minister, the Minister of Fisheries. Who is running the ministry? Oh. I'm asking, I want to find out who is running that ministry. My Lord, if you understand what is PSS. Mm. We refer to PSS as Ayatollahs at one stage. Maybe you were still very young. <laughs> we refer to PSS as Ayatollahs. I told us, uh, they were the ones who ran the ministry. They were the ones who, you see, in terms of the letters of the ministry, even the minister's letterhead, it says all official correspondences are to be referred to, my lord, mm. to the permanent secretary. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay, so in so says, this is the issue. So in and I made reference to that as well in my in my. Evidence in chief. Uh, so, in instance, you're just a ceremonial minister there to sign letters off without reading them. My lord, I had trust. It's mm. not a question of ceremonial or not ceremonial. Mm. I had trust. If you are sent here by your permanence, by, by the PG, mm. to come and to interrogate me or to ask me questions, mm. you see, she has trust in you. That's why you are here. <laughs> She is she's not coming as in a personal capacity here. Yeah? I see. Yeah, she never comes here. Mm. And she will never come here as well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I never went even. Mr. Isau, I'm here in my professional capacity, but let's not delve into that. Now, I'm in my the, political the, capacity. The, the, here. the document that you signed mm -hmm. in Angola mm -hmm. was titled. MOU does no longer titled agreement. Is that correct? Correct, my lord. All right. And you saw that it was titled MOU instead of agreement. Yes, my lord. Oh, it's okay. titled as MOU. And that is the document that was gazetted MOU. Yeah, I think in terms of the gazette, I just want to get it to, okay. um, oh, right. to be hundred percent because I don't know who it is. But it's the file, my God. Yeah, here we are. Publication of agreement.
let's go back to the advice you received from the from the AG. Mm -hmm. When you read this advice, mm -hmm. when you received it before you forwarded it to the PS, mm -hmm. you appreciated this advice that an MOU that was being forwarded to you, this was not a legally binding document, yeah? I do take note of it, my lord, but I'm not saying that. Uh, did you appreciate that advice? Appreciate. Yes. So, or did you find courtesy, it to be? Courtesy allows you to appreciate it. Okay. It's not issue of. Uh, did, did you have a problem with his advice? Did you dispute it? That is not correct. That is not a legally binding. And I never had interactions between no. me and verbally or even otherwise after this very, 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 very letter. Oh, okay. As I told you that I was. <laughs> I moved away and then I was on my family related matters. I see. Yeah. Of course, losing your only brother is very hard breaking and very sad. Oh, okay. I think maybe just to conclude on that matter, as far as you are concerned, as you testified, you don't know if these recommendations by the AG were incorporated in the MOU. No, I cannot uh, cannot confirm on that whether it was incorporated or not incorporated. No, uh, oh, okay. Uh, <coughs> we'll take a break and we'll resume at 12 o'clock. Yes, it plays a call.